All right, here it is, episode three, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, Painting the Red Guard. Welcome, nerds. I'm trying to get these videos out as quickly as possible. We're going to be turning this gray ugly, just flat out ugly model into uh, this beautiful piece of art that's about to pop up on the screen. <laughs> Ooh, decent. Hey, if this is your first time coming to the channel, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that little ding button, the little bell or whatever it is. So when I post new videos, you can watch it and say, God, this guy sucks. But I like watching them because I maybe learn a thing or two or I just want to follow along, listen to some good music, hear me talk real quick. So hit that subscribe button. Do me a favor. So we're going to be doing uh, the Red Guard. Uh, it's going to be the back. We're going to be doing some um, blending techniques with some Lamia medium to make the... Uh, red stick out a little bit more in certain places and uh, not so much in other places. We're going to be following the card of the game. And as you can tell, the back cape is a little bit darker red orangish that we can see. So we're going to go in some orange tones in here. So without further ado, all right, uh, let's go. Start off by scraping all those mold line bits and pieces. If you want to wash it beforehand with a little Dawn soap or just dish soap and some hot water, you totally can. I didn't do that and I typically don't do that because it's all about saving time for me. Now I know a lot of people on YouTube or friends or whatever do scrub them. You probably should get that oily resin off there, it probably would help and maybe I'll start doing that in the future. when. I get my life back on track, meaning less work for my real job and more free time at home. But as of right now, I'm not. Uh, go ahead and post it onto, I use old caps of uh, spray bottles and uh, spray cans with some sticky tack. And go ahead and spread that with some, uh, some black. We're gonna be doing some zenithal highlighting on it. If you're using some spray paint, do it outside unless you're going to use a ventilator like I have on out of camera. And once you spray it all with black, I'm using Chaos Black. I'm going to sprue, uh, spray some gray, some Citadel Mechanica Standard Gray from a 45 degree angle away. If you want a little bit better idea on how to do a prime, uh, watch my prime video. Um, it's under my playlist. Uh, once we're doing and done with the gray, we're going to move on to a little uh, Corax white from directly above. Very quick spray. Make sure you're doing it from a distance away to give it that nice zenithal highlighting, meaning that the sun, the lighting of the character is going to be as if the sun were directly above it in the cast of shadows. So once that's done, uh, we should be ready to go here in a second. You can either remove your uh, character from the top of the spray can top and move it to a holder or you can keep it there, whatever you want to do. Take two brushfuls. If you're not using a wet palette and you're using a well, that's fine too. Take two brushfuls of Lamia medium and put it onto your palette. And we're gonna be doing a nice brushful of corn red. So two parts Lamia medium, one part corn red. We're gonna be starting by getting all that red all over that armor. This is mostly um, a red model, so a lot of it's going to be red. We're going to add some different colors to put some contrast in there. So we're going to go with some, some orange, but most of it's red. So it's going to be one majority of color. Just continue going over all the red parts. Um, we're not really worried right now if we get it into places that don't need it because we could always just go over it. All 
Make sure we're getting the top of the helmet to include the horns. And uh, yeah, just cruise around. Have a good time with it. All right, we're gonna go two parts Lamia medium, one part Mephiston red. Uh, I'm not showing you the video of the well. Uh, I figured you guys probably got it from the last one. Um, and we're gonna be doing a less portion of the surface area. So if there was 100% of the surface area that we were hitting with the corn red, we're gonna be hitting about 75% of that area to 50% of that area with the Mephiston red and the Lamia medium. So just follow along what I'm doing and do the lower portions and the spots that are gonna be hitting the light because the parts that hit the light should, in theory, be brighter than the other spots. Just make sure we're hitting all the pieces of armor. We're gonna be doing two to three layers of this Mephiston Red and Lamia Medium combo. Um, we're gonna be building up the highlights. So your first highlight might not be that that bright and you're thinking, oh, what, what's going on? Do another one. After it dries completely, do another one. So do two to three, depending on how bright you want it. If you want it brighter and you want that thing to be glowing red, then do three, maybe four if you feel confident enough. Just be doing a little bit less surface area each coat you do. I think for all the spots that hit the sun, I ended up doing three coats for each. It's kind of a process, it takes a while, but uh, you want it to look decent on the table, and so we're taking a little bit extra time on it. All right, the third color we're using on this armor is gonna be, again, two parts Lamia Medium and one part Evil Sun Scarlet. Now we're gonna be doing a smaller portion of this. You can do 25% of the surface area you're gonna be painting, so just follow along what I'm doing. Hit those bottom portions of it, um, the edges, make sure we're getting the edges, and getting 25% total surface area on the actual spot we're painting. So just go around and get less and less. Again, two to three coats. If you want it a little bit brighter, you can go four in certain areas. Make sure you let it dry between each coat completely. This stuff dries fairly quickly with the medium in it. Um, and make sure we're just hitting those spots. So depending on how bright you want it. Make sure we're hitting the helmet and we're getting it on the horns as well as the horns are probably a pretty bright surface because it is hitting the sun mostly. Uh, again, two to three layers. Just take your time, enjoy it. We're gonna take some Karaberg Crimson and we're just gonna be hitting the cracks. So on the front of the armor, you can see the cracks that one chain link or one part of the armor is connecting to the other part. Hit those cracks. That's gonna create some contrast and some um, connection that kind of darkens the recesses of our model. Hey, if you got a break while you're letting the, the wash dry, pick up your phone, head over to uh, Instagram, check us out, nerd.nights. It's the same symbol of the castle when you look it up. Hey, go ahead and follow us on there. Uh, we're posting new stuff, new videos all the time, and what's coming up. All right, we're just going to be using some Fire Dragon Bright right now. 
and we're going to be thinning this down quite a bit. Um, Lamia medium as well. And we are going to be hitting the edges. And while you're hitting those edges, certain parts, if you want to take a break from those edges, meaning do a line on the edge and then have a break in it so you don't have the fire dragon bright and then maybe a little bit of dotting along it to kind of break up that pattern that looks good as well but just follow what i'm doing and make sure we're hitting those edges two to three coats as well two probably is the best As you can see in certain spots, I have it um, a thicker line compared to a thinner line. You wanna kinda break it up a little bit to make the patterns different because it is armor. You want it to kinda look a little rustic-y like, oh, he's, he's got bright red armor, but it's also, this guy's been in battle. He's battle-worn warrior, so you wanna kinda break it up a little bit. And that's how my model turned out. So it looks pretty decent. All right, for the cape, we're gonna be doing some straight up thinned corn red. Um, we're gonna be hitting the front and the back of the cape to include the inside of it when you're looking from forward. While that's drying, hit the tail, the little devil tail, um, with some Mephiston red, thinned down of course. We're gonna take one to two brushfuls of Karaburg Crimson, and we're gonna mix that with some Lamia Medium. Probably use one brush full of Lamy Medium to two parts of Karaburg Crimson. We're going to be applying this to the cracks only, the crevices um, of the cape. This is going to build the contrast, but it's not going to build it so much that it's going to look super weird when we're going to put on the other layers that are going to go on the raised edges of the cloak. We're going to start with one part of Evil Sun's Scarlet and two parts of Lamia Medium. We're going to hit that tail first and we're only going to do the top part of the tail. The tip of it is going to be a little bit more um, red, but as you can see in the picture from the board game, it's going to be purple. So we're going to be taking care of that in the second to last step of this tutorial. So go ahead and hit the top part of the tail. We're gonna start working on the cloak and by doing that, we're only gonna be hitting the raised areas. It's gonna take two to three layers of this since it is a thinned paint. We're gonna build up that, that contrast. Make sure we're gonna be hitting the top part next to the tail, um, anything that's gonna hit the sun and any raised areas. As you can tell already, that contrast is looking actually pretty good. If you wanted to, you could keep it like that. I took it forward a couple steps because the game art, he looks more oranges and it's a, it's a orange, more oranges type of red, so we're gonna pick that up. But if you wanna keep it here, that looks fantastic that way and it's got that nice contrast. We're gonna take one brushful of Fire Dragon Bright and we're gonna mix it with two brushfuls of Lamia Medium to get you a nice thin um, 
paint. While you're brushing on that paint, go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button if you like what you see so far. Appreciate it. You're the best ever. We're going to be doing top parts of the raised areas again. You want to make this a smaller surface area you're painting compared to the red we put on before. Two to three coats again, and each time you do it, you want to do less and less on that surface area. That way you build up that contrast. Make sure to hit the areas uh, on the edges of the cape as the sun would be hitting those specific spots. It should be a darker color orange at the top of the cape as the sun would be hitting that most likely. And uh, pretty good. Pretty orangey. For the shield, the hook, and the chain, we're going to be using a little lead belcher. There's also a portion on the belt. We haven't painted the belt yet. If you want to skip ahead, it's going to be rhinox hide and lead belcher we're going to be hitting that with. You can do that as well. Switch to a smaller brush when hitting those chains. I was using a size 10-0 brush, Rosemary & Co. Love those brushes. Not sponsored by them, because today's sponsor is nobody again. Per usual, maybe one day, we'll get there. For the sun on the shield, we're using Balthazar Gold. 10-0 brush. For the metal areas, we're going to be using the peanut butter and jelly of GW Paints. A little Nolan oil, since our surface areas, well, lead belcher and Balthazar gold. Hit all those spots. Um, if you need to switch to a smaller brush on those chains, go ahead and do that. But make sure those that Nolan oil sinks into all the recesses of that chain. To brighten up those now dull highlights, we're going to be using a little iron breaker. I'm going to use it on the edges of the shield, edges of the hook, and I'm going to be hitting the top portion of the chains, keeping the recesses dark. Just follow along what I'm doing and do not get in the recesses of those chains because those chains are going to look really good once you hit the iron breaker on top of them mixed with the next color we're going to be using, which is going to be Stormpost Silver here in a second. Take some of that Storm Host Silver. Now you might not notice a big difference in this, and that's okay. It's more of just a subtle highlight, very super subtle, but on those chains when you just hit the top part of those chains you're going to notice that just that extra little brightness and the edges of that hook it's going to be really really nice when it stands out especially when it's hitting the light For the skin of our red guard, we're going to be using a little Tusk Gore fur. Now, I had kind of a hard time thinking about what I was going to do with this skin, but I ended up going with Tusk Gore fur instead of mixing some colors together. I just went with this. We're not going to be doing a whole lot with it because I feel like it doesn't really bring out the model at all, and there's there's not any facial features really that are on this model. It's too small. It's too hard to get to without just cutting off the arm and trying it that way. So we're just going to hit the the skin portions as I'm doing in here obviously and doing just that. We're going to put a shade on it and that's going to all we're going to do. Be
be careful when you're hitting that eye and the face between the hood of the helmet. And I used a size 10 0 brush for this. Hit the skin with a little Reichland flush shade and that's all we're going to do. If you look at the character card, his face, facial expressions are so dark you can't tell, so let's just keep it that way. For the little pants he's got on or something, maybe some undershorts, I don't know. We're going to be using a little Steel Legion Drab. This does not match the card character, so you can do whatever you want. I just felt like I needed to break up the colors just a little bit with some subtle brown um, to make it look, you know, a little different. Like mentioned earlier, for the belt, we're going to be using a little Rhinox hide front and make sure you hit the sides as I'm doing here. Little lead belcher for the belt buckle. Be careful, it's pretty small and it's not very detailed. Little storm host silver to brighten it up just a little bit, but it's not really a focal point in the model, so it's not that big of a deal. To brighten up the gold on the shield, we're going to use a little, 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 little liberator gold um, to brighten up that Balthazar gold we had earlier. For the shoes and the gloves, make sure you hit those gloves, especially the one behind the shield. You don't really have to highlight the shield because obviously no one's going to see it. I'm using a little dark gray from Model Color Vallejo. If you have something comparable, just use that. For the highlight on that, we're going to be using a little Skaven Blight Dinge. This is more or less for the hand that's holding the hook. And we're going to be using that on the raised surfaces, catching the fingertips, the knuckles, and the fingers themselves. Don't cover the entire model with it, just hit the top surface areas because we're going to do another highlight here in a second. Storm Vermin Fur for the highlights. I didn't use this on the shoes, I'm just purely doing this on the hand. I put it on the fingers, the finger knuckles, and the fingertips. Any portion that would actually get hit with the light and make it kind of give a little contrast. So you can hit, do some edge highlighting on this with the portion that's kind of touching the red just to kind of give it a little light versus dark. For the second to last thing we're doing here, we're going to mix a little Xerxes Purple with some Lamia Medium. Two parts Lamia Medium, one part Xerxes Purple. We're basically kind of giving that edge, or sorry, the tail, a little wash in purple. The red's going to stand out a little bit, but it's going to give you a purple tail, which is going to look pretty nice as far as the card art is concerned and what it looks like. For the base, we're doing black. In my upcoming models, probably when Bloodborne comes out, I'm gonna be doing some different stuff, but I'm just painting these basic black. And there it is. Look how good you did. I'm proud of you. Fantastic. Looks pretty decent, and there wasn't a whole lot of steps, just some basic, you know, light versus dark stuff. Front looks pretty good. Depending on what you do with the cape, if you went as, as bright as I did, or if you did your own, hey, good job. It looks pretty good. Uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for stopping by, for watching this video. 
um, and subscribing. If you subscribe to this and uh, if you're getting the updates whenever they're coming on, I greatly appreciate it. I can't thank you enough. Um, if you want to spread the word, post it on forums, send it to your friends, tell them, hey, check this guy out. I greatly appreciate it because this channel can't be made without you guys and your support. But uh, appreciate it for watching and uh, thanks for everything that you do. You're doing great. All right, I'm out. Paint on.